We and now they have a lot of freedom because if Origin don't lock in their support now, which they probably won't, um, it means that Fnatic can get themselves something like a Zyra Khan if they want to, or they can go for a Kaiser here. If um, because the thing about Felos is he's actually been nerfed on the current patch, which means his laning is weaker. And while he can still be oppressive, it's nowhere near as oppressive as it was. Which means champions like Kaiser, who scale very well and can act as a very effective dive onto champions like him, um, I think pair very nicely into him. So um, <laughs> I like the no, cheeky uh, Olaf over there. <laughs> Well, it hasn't, been, it hasn't been locked in yet, so it could still be an Olaf pick, Phineas. Like, I, 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 wanna... I don't think they're going to play Olaf again, mate. <laughs> I, I agree with you, but I'm leaving, I'm leaving the options open. It's the center locked in, uh, might be teamed up with the Tom Kench. I, I do want to bring attention to the very early Rumble Lock from Origin. It's not common that you see Rumble Locked this early on in a draft. Uh, yeah, and I accidentally wrote down Rumble in the wrong place. Um, so, uh, <laughs> the, the, the blind Rumble does surprise me. I'm not sure why they've done it. Uh, they didn't want to lock in the jungler unless it's jungle rumble, which it might be. It was an OG pick from Zerse back when he joined the league in 2017. I think he joined the league in 2017. Yeah. Um, uh, with the unicorns of love, I think. And he used to play rumble, Zach, and there was one more that he used to play that I can't remember Warwick. off the top of my head. Uh, Warwick. Yeah, that was his yeah. other one. You're correct. And... Uh, yeah, so there's a possibility of it. I don't expect it. I think that it's more likely going to be in the mid or top lane. I know that Alfari is a pretty competent Rumble player. And I'm trying to think now what the bans suggest. Because with the Yasuo taken off the board... I'm not actually sure why. I guess they want to deny the Gragas-Yasuo combo. Because I can't think of any specific picks that you'd be afraid of if you want to take away the... Um, yeah, so I really like this Jarvan ban. I think it's super smart because Jarvan's one of the few champions that while having very high early game impact will always offer like game value just because of the amount of utility that he can provide and he can just go full tank. So I think denying that from Origin is great. And if you force Zerse onto one of these early game junglers like Lee Sin, which he doesn't really play, Elise, which he's probably not going to play because you already have Rumble or a uh, Olaf or Rek'Sai, as Origin, you're going to feel pretty comfortable. So... Yeah, I think yeah. the band so far from Fnatic are looking pretty good. I agree with that. I think, I wonder if Zac is one other option that I could see Zersi going towards. Um, it provides late, uh, early, uh, mid, sorry. You're right, and yeah, it's game, not, it's not terrible, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I agree with the Jarvan ban being strong against that. There's Alfari's Maokai being banned away as well, so Whipper wants an easier lane in the top lane, or one where that, Tree just isn't sitting on him. That could mean the Origin go for a game plank here, because... Uh, with one of the big, I'm not going to say counters, but with with the Maokai taken off the board, I think it does open up the GP, but then you're obviously saving your jungle pick for last, which you typically don't want to do. So, are they really going to do Olaf again? Nah, it's going to be Rek'Sai. It's okay. going to be Rek'Sai. Uh, locked in for Zerse. It's his third most played. He's, well, he's got two games on it, so it's tied with Elise <laughs> and, uh, and Zach after the Gragas and the Karthus were removed. Fnatic here. Options for their jungle, uh, their top lane and their mid lane. And Aatrox has made its way through picks and bans so far. And Whippo is a yep. very strong Aatrox player. I mean, he kind of made a name for himself on it, right? Like, it's one of the champions that teams would just respect ban away from him because of how talented he was on it. And speaking of respect champions, uh, Nemesis and his Cassio are definitely a match made in heaven. It's one of his best champions. It's something that whenever he locks in, he always has a good performance on it. So it looks like Fnatic going for a similar approach to what OG went last game, scaling team fight. They have good scaling in the bot lane, pretty defensive. They have Cassio, which has okay gank setup, but when paired up with the Gragas, you have a lot of damage. Now they just need a strong AD top laner to help provide a lot of damage, and I think Aatrox fits the bill perfectly. So I think Fnatic have got a pretty well-rounded comp right now. I think that they have easy lanes that they can play around in top and mid, and obviously that's been the focus for Fnatic this series. They've kind of abandoned bot lane and allowed them, or left them rather, to their own devices. And so I think that, yeah, I think Fnatic's comp has kind of got a bit of everything, and I'm curious as to how Origin is going to round things out because I think the Rek'Sai pick makes their comp a little bit awkward. Um, so they're going to... Yeah, okay. So they're going to stick with the game plan. So the problem right now the Origin have is that in the top lane at very early levels, GP will have prio, but usually this matchup is slightly more Aatrox favored because of how aggressive you can be. I think that you don't have a lot of gank set up in the top lane. I think it's hard to gank mid lane outside of level six, which means you have to prioritize on finding kills in the bot lane. So the goal for Origin should be to do exactly what they did previously. And the only hope 
that you have if you're a Fnatic fan is that Hillisang doesn't have the same performance that he had in the early game of last game. If they just keep playing safe and they avoid the risk of a dive, then they should be pretty safe. And the thing is, uh, Nuketuck can't guarantee Pryo against the Cassio because she's much safer in terms of the 1v1, and every time Nuketuck tries to approach the wave, he's going to get punished by the poke from Cassio. So I don't think it's going to be as easy for OG to be able to roam down and set up plays like they could in game one. And I think that Hillisang is going to respect Zerse a lot more than he did before, but you have to bear in mind Alfari's Gangplank ultimate can also impact the bot lane. So this game is all going to be about, can Zerse get upset fed again? If he can't, then Fnatic is set up to take game three, uh, take game four and move on to the next round against Mad Lions next week. Well, we'll see. Uh, I wonder if Nuketuck runs Predator Boots in the mid lane on the Rumble. We have seen it before for those roams down towards the bottom lane, if that's where Ojin want to invest. Of course, Rek'Sai better ganking top lane uh, when you are on red side because you can come in from behind the lane or ganking bot lane when you're on blue side because you can come in from behind the lane. It's not the easiest gank path for Zerse if he wants to go down towards that bottom lane, but there are still avenues for him to approach. Hillisang having two health bars will probably help him out just a tad. Uh, when I also think Hillisang is a really good Tom Kench. Like, he he's played it a few times Kench. this split. So uh, I think champions where he can just get into the thicker things. He's also running the exhaust. So I wouldn't be too worried um, looking at this. I think that right now Fnatic is really set up for success. I think they have... You want to talk about OG comfort picks from last game? This is like Fnatic comfort picks across the board. Gragas... Uh, the Aatrox and the Casio are like three of Fnatic's most comfortable picks right now. So I think Fnatic is, is really looking good coming into this yep. game. Let's get into game four of Fnatic versus OG. And Betty, you were talking about comfort picks. I've had a quick look at the numbers. Uh, Bwipo played one Aatrox game this split, won it, unkilled. Nemesis played. Well, that was the uh, that was the Nocturne top game, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nemesis played four Cassiopeia games this split, undefeated on that champion. Uh, Selfmade has played. Uh, sorry, six about... Gragas games, eighty-three percent win rate on that champ. Yeah. They uh, Hillasang, hundred percent win rate on the time catch. And during the regular season, Reckless played one game on center and they won. He's only lost one game of the four he has played so far on center. So it is a, oh, sorry, five he's played so far on center, including this one. But uh, yes, there were a lot of champions that Fnatic are very comfortable on. And Origin do feel like they put themselves in a little, of a, a little bit of a one horse, or not one. Uh, they put a lot of their eggs in one basket in saying, yeah. we have to get upset ahead. If we don't get upset ahead, we can't really do that much. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be tough. We'll see if they can pull it off. Excuse me. Um, what I think is interesting is that Zerse is starting on bot side of the map. Uh, Rek'Sai has very strong early ganks. So often you will see Rek'Sai's go for level 3 ganks. Um, one of the old Rek'Sai clears was to do uh, a full red side clear into then level 3 gank. And I was kind of expecting him to do blue into gromp into red to then look for a gank, but it looks like he's going to skip the gromp, go into walls, which is obviously like perfectly fine because uh, the Rek'Sai clears the jungle so quickly with her Q. Um, but usually you will look for a gank around level 3 because of how easy it is to tunnel in, get that knock up, and then as long as your laners have enough damage, you can find a pretty effective kill. The question is, will he actually look for it? Because it looks like that he is going for his rafters, so his priority is not going for any early ganks for the time being. Now, getting that extra experience from the jungle early on, of course, Wolves give you less experience than a Gromp, so if he had done uh, blue into Wolves into red, he wouldn't have hit level 3. Nemesis True. stepping forward here to get some vision, knows that the Razor Beaks have been cleared, and Xerxes will just go around to do his red. We saw a little bit of trading in the bottom lane, uh, Reckless taking a bit of a, a bad trade, but he has the Piercing Darkness, so he can just heal that up pretty easily, and it shouldn't be too much of a bother for the Fnatic bottom lane. So you can see that Selfmade has done a full bot side clear. Um, Zerse is now looking to get information on where any jungler is. He has now spotted out Selfmade. He could go for a bit of a cheeky smite steal, but Selfmade does have information as well. Puts the ward across the wall. Zerse looking for the knockup into the queue. And when Selfmade gets it. Oh no, wait. Yeah, Selfmade does get it. He's got blue yep. as well. Yep, yep. Uh, good smite there from yeah, the Fnatic Good jungler. combo there from the Q plus smite plus uh, E combo. Bwipo's super low. Is he just going to yep. do a drive-by here? He is. He's looking for the gank. Bwipo 
Man's the Inferno Chain splashes forward, trying to pull Xerxes back, but now Afari takes the turret aggro. Xerxes has to flash away from himself and he's flashing forward as well. Ends up being two flashes on the side of Fnatic to one on Origin. So it looks like that uh, Bwipo got very low in terms of these early trades. And, like We talk about it every game, right? Gangplank, levels one to three, one of the strongest laners in the game. The passive burn is just so obnoxious. And OG was setting up for a dive. We talked about how Xerxes could look for an early gank, and after getting level three, he decided to just go straight to the top. It was obviously very dangerous, because self-made was in the area, but as you highlighted, Medic, two flashes for one, definitely going to be worth it. And um, also a pretty big CS advantage in favor of Alfari right now. So after going back, grabbing himself an early Doran's Blade, he's going to feel quite comfortable in this one versus one. He's going to try and keep up the pressure, as we can see across the board, that uh, advantage going in favor of upset, as you would typically expect in these fasting lanes. Meanwhile, small advantage for Nemesis in the mid lane. Oh, Whippo with a huge trade on Alfari there. I mean, Alfari has the oranges, so he's okay for the moment. Hillisang going to be able to get away from this gank in the bottom lane. Hook doesn't connect on Reckless, protecting the dodge. Work with this run straight back underneath this turret and answers with a little bit of damage of his own. I do want to come back to that uh, the fact that self made and Whippo have burnt their flashes. It makes it actually very easy for Alfari to lane here as well because even if he gets caught out by Whippo, if self made's coming in, he doesn't have to predict the body slam flash. He can just wait for the body slam and then flash away afterwards. So Reckless actually using heal there in the bottom lane. He's a little bit nervous that Destiny was going to land the play as self made is yes. just waiting around the corner. He was, uh, he realized he got too close to the wave and that he was in flare range, so he used heal to uh, increase the movement speed to just get out of flare range before the animation came through, so definitely very hesitant, but like I think we were both looking at that Thresh and thinking, yeah, he could definitely yep, land yep. flare right now, and so it's very understandable why uh, Reckless would do that. Definitely a small mistake on his part as the pressure continues to come out. Oh. Good hook tank there from Hillisang. I saw the hook coming out after the Gravitum root landed. I was nervous for Reckless. But uh, Hillisang standing in the way of the hook. This is one, one of the benefits of, you know, if you commonly get caught out by skill shots, play a champion that wants to get caught out by skill shots when they're aimed at your teammates. <laughs> Works for Hillisang. Ooh, I like what Fnatic's bot lane is doing right now. They're setting up a bit of a freeze. This is going to keep the wave pushing in their favor. And notice how it stops Upset from going back to base because he's like, okay, this isn't okay. We're going to lose way too much farm and Reckless and Hillisang are going to set up the wave too optimally. So we've got to push this out. In an ideal world, they want to push this all the way up to the tower. So you'll see Upset approaching, approaching. And then when it's underneath the tower, he'll disengage. So now Upset and our uh, Destiny rather can get a safe recall without too much worry. The, the risk, of course, of that play is self-made could have shown up set up a gank and then because upset and destiny have overstayed they obviously die in that exchange uh, but that doesn't end up happening destiny staying around to catch the wave uh, trying to do the same thing on the other side because Fnatic obviously will want to hard push it knowing that upset on Aphelios has backed so the support's duty is to make sure that that wave doesn't crash into the tower or at least to be able to hold it for a little while. You can see Reckless is going to try and trade in. Actually, with the last and Grace, that's a catch going out. Whippo pops the world under in the top lane. Selfmade's on the top side of the map as well, but with the Cannon Barrage coming out, Whippo shouldn't be long for the world. First Blood goes over to Alfari. Destiny had to burn Flash, I believe, in the bottom lane. Yeah, so the bright side for Origin is that while their lanes are difficult to gank outside of the bot 2v2, um, the fact that they were able to burn that very early flash due to the early pathing from Xerxes means that they can come back to top lane and actually get a kill onto Bwipo. This has put Alfari in a fantastic position because not only does he now have an even bigger CS advantage, Oh, but Destiny's dead. Destiny's dead, even with the heal coming out, but they're looking to turn it around. The Ignite going down as Reckless gets gobbled up, eat it up, he's done! Destiny might even survive! Oh my goodness! Fnatic baited in, Destiny able to survive for a moment, the Tongue Lash doesn't connect, it's a double for Origin in the bottom lane, and what a superb start it is for Origin in this game. And it ends in disaster for Fnatic's duo. They looked like they were set up for success, but it ends up floundering, and we'll get a look at that in a second. As Zuse, he's been sitting in this top lane for a while. He's been waiting for his prey to overstep, and the second Whippo shows up, they're able to find that quick kill. But here we see Destiny taking a huge amount of damage as he tries to freeze the wave for his AD carry. Yes, Upset is a level down, but of course he then picks that back up. And then the collapse starts to come through. Destiny and Upset, they want to... Oh, he uses his Hex, but I don't know what Destiny's doing here, honestly. Like, that was a good hook and a great exhaust, but the oh, action Whippo's isn't over again. yet. Void Rush coming out. Whippo trying to land the Dark in Blade, but in the end, Alfari and Xerxes will get the kill. Second kill of the game for Alfari, and this top lane is quickly snowballing away from Fnatic. I mean, Medic. Yep. Silver Scrape. This is... The <laughs> Let's it. not jump to conclusions. Let's not jump to conclusions, but... Origins seem to be finding a formula for success right now, or 
Fnatic seems to be collapsing because this is the second time now. Where, like in the last game, Hellasang was getting caught out by ganks, right? That that happens. You know, you get ganked. It's not a big deal. But now they're losing two v two, right? Like Reckless was in our all bow. Many people thought, like I put Hellasang as my best support of the the split, and now he's getting hooked once again. He does have the thick skin, but the box is coming down. Upset and Destiny are a level up here. Hillisang tried to turn on to Destiny, you can see Upset steps in front of him, trying to get the Devourer, and Destiny will fall, one for one, but it's Hillisang who gets the kill, and now Upset is going to open up on Reckless. However, Upset will take a lot of damage, he needs to switch over his guns if he wants to heal up towards that Severum. The 2v2 coming out on in Fnatic's favor there, but still, Upset now three kills in Vedius. So, yes, that, that exchange was definitely the best case scenario for Fnatic, even though they were a level down, they were even able to find a successful two versus two. So, props to Fnatic there. But the problem is the kill went on to Hillisang. And as you mentioned, Upset is the one that secured that other kill. And as our observers highlight, 3.7k gold on Upset. And remember what we were talking about, Medic? Who needed to get ahead? Who was the priority to get ahead in this comp? For Origin, it was Upset. And he doesn't need his jungler. They're just straight up winning the two versus two. So that gives the freedom for Xerxes to just hard commit to the top side of the map. So now they have two winning lanes, and now they're looking to contest the Infernal. Xerxes has the level advantage, but self-made able to land the smite. Fnatic will be able to walk out of this one. And I, I know we, right, we're talking so much about upset, but the reason we do is because he and Reckless are key carries for their respective teams. When you look at Origin and you look at how they are able to win these games, it's all about getting upset ahead. He's got the second highest KDA in the league, the second highest damage a minute as an AD carry, and he falls behind in CS a little bit in the lane, but if you can get him ahead, he can really take the game by the scruff of the neck. I mean, after Kazi's performance yesterday, there's obviously been a lot of debate around who our second best AD carries are, but when we just look at the numbers, Upset and Reckless are our two best performing AD carries from the regular season. So coming into this matchup, a lot of eyes were going to be put into this two versus two in the bot lane, especially when you look at the support difference. Like, Hillisang has been praised by many as the best or second best support in our league, and Destiny has not even been put in the conversation for top three. Some are even critical enough to say that he's not even in the conversation for top five. And when you look at how the game, for the most part, expectations were like, okay, well, they can't even deal with the Senazillion. But now Upset and Destiny are winning these two versus two. And I can already hear fans. It's, it's the classic Bjergsen perspective, you know, like, <laughs> put Reckless on a carry. You know, why is he the support? Why is he the one standing back? And when you look at those stats, that's not because he was playing things like Senna. Medic. It's because he was the one getting misfortune. He was getting a failure, and we haven't seen Reckless on that yet. But based on the way Origin is playing, they might have to force that as we're going into a fight. Abyssal Void is used there by Hillisang to try and join this. Earth. He's going to land the Smite. Ripper with the World Ender. They're looking to try and pick up that Eye of the Herald. But I don't know if Origin can approach us too easily. Now, Nuketuck does have the ult. Will Origin just settle for the fact that Fnatic don't get the Herald? That seems to be the case. They've gone back to farming. They say, okay, we can get some lanes, uh, waves, we can get some CS. And Fnatic. But, but look, yeah. look at the wave states, Medic. Like the, <laughs> the the mid wave just gets pushed in. The top wave gets given full control over for Alfari. And yes, while it does disappear, and Origin aren't able to pick that one up. Um, Fnatic lost a lot of map control in that situation, allowing, look, Upset gets a reset faster. He's going to start making his way down to bot lane. Um, the Rumble, oh, okay, the Rumble didn't choose to reset. I thought Nuketuck also decided to do it, but he's going to hold off for a little bit. Destiny gets a good reset off as well. So um, Fnatic members are going to be a little slower back to lane. But for the most part, still overall pretty even trade. Actually looks like Nuketuck is taking a bit of an adventure here. Getting a ward in by the red buff. Very good for spotting self-made out as his camp is up in a little while. Upset in a very strong position. But Essence Reaver finished now on this AD. Now he's just he's waiting. He knows. He knows that self-made is here. He's going to tunnel in. It lands the knock-up on self-made. Someone's going to try and get out and has to flash. Oof. And that's a two-level advantage for Zerse in the jungle now, Vedius. Yeah, but I'm not quite sure what happened there for Zerse because normally... I, I know what happened there for Zerse. He didn't have Halo Blades. That's why. I'm, so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. So I I watch Ender's Rek'Sai so much that normally when you run Hail of Blades, you can land all three of your Qs within the uh, knockup. So what you normally do is Q, Q, E, 
And then if you can land the last auto, you normally will, but you'll often just use your ult instead, and that's more than enough to get yourself an execute. And so when I was looking at that play, I was like, why didn't his Q come out that quickly? And it's because he wasn't running Hail of Blades, it's because he was running Conqueror instead. So I honestly think if he was running Hail of Blades, he would have found that solo kill yep. there. Um, but yeah, there you go. Well, we'll see if the Kong pays off for him to sum them up, because I'm sure Ender is tweeting furiously right now. <laughs> saying, wait, if you had Hella Blaze, he would have got that. Uh, bottom lane tower falls in favor of Origin. Upset is sitting about 6,000 gold right now, where Reckless and Hillisang are about three to 4,000 on either champion. In the top lane, however, Reckless and Hillisang have been able to take three plates off this turret. And maybe we'll get one more. They decide against staying around because they know Upset is on his way. Looks like it actually might be an Infinity Edge second here on the AD carry, as uh, I don't believe Runan's builds out of the Quick Cloak. Oh, don't test me on my component. No, I, I'm, medic. Like, <laughs> I've been playing a bunch of AD carry recently on my Smurf. Um, if any teams are looking for one, I'm gold too, by the way, like 6% win rate, I'm gold. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but I'm gonna check it Yeah, I'm right pretty now. sure, I'm pretty sure it's the um, Zeal plus Dagger Dagger. Kirchi's Shard, yeah. Um, Anyway, yeah, because I'm, I'm always wrong when it comes to itemization for AD carries. Like, I know what the four builds are, so I'm going to quickly move away from this. Matt and Drake spawns in 15 seconds, Medic. That's likely going to be the primary oh, objective. Oh, it does, because Zeal builds out of Cloak. Board. That's the mistake I made. God damn it, Medic. Yeah, I forgot Look, the Zeal. this is why you Where can't they... test me on Look, these things. I wasn't <laughs> testing you, I was testing myself, and I came up <laughs> wanting, as I have done so many times in the past, sadly. But, come back to the game, as you say, Mountain Drake up very soon here, Bedios. In fact, it's already up. I wonder if... See, now I'm sitting here asking myself component questions because I see the early um, Null Magic Mantle in Nuke Duck's inventory. So at first I thought, oh, he's probably going for Merc Treads, but then he's also completed his... He's got uh, Sorcerer's Shoes, so yeah. That's yeah, exactly. Not. That's what I'm saying. So I'm like, he might be rushing Banshee's Veil, um, trying to secure that because I understand that against Cassio, if you block the poison, then it's great. Yeah. Uh, but it's super easy to proc Banshee's Veil as a Cassio because you just land E, and because the cooldown is so low, then it's... It, yeah, yeah it's so like I don't I don't think it makes though. sense to go Banshee's Veil against the Cassio. Um, so he might just be building it for the early MR. Hook does land in top lane. Yeah, onto Hillisang. That's not the target you really want. Destiny has some damage turned back around onto him. The heals come out. Upset. Not going to go any further. Does land the root. This that is the thing about Thresh. No you're actually there. surprisingly squishy, especially if you're going towards Redemption, yep. which is uh, the build that Destiny's gone for. Yeah, I mean, you're right, and we saw that right there. And Hillisang, by going for the Sunfire, is also very tanky. So you saw that he was actually sustaining a huge amount of damage in that two versus two, and notice that Nemesis now has prior win mid, so he's using that to move into topside jungle, and self-made is clearing out the river. So he has his eyes set on the top lane, they want to try and secure this tower, but Xerxes is here to cover level 10, big level advantage, they're looking for plays. Upset like going for the root. Oh, Destiny doesn't quite land the hook onto Hillisang, who was waiting in the bush to devour his AD carry. Xerxes here, still a two level advantage in the jungle, has the Black Cleaver on its way alongside the Warrior Enchant. Finished. Actually looks like the magic resist was purely magic resist as you now have a Oblivion Orb complete on Nuke Duck in the middle lane. So maybe just wanted something to survive against the Cassio. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. More. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Against double AP and self main and Nemesis, like, it's perfectly reasonable to itemize that way. Um, I'm curious as to what he does build it into later. We'll keep track of that. But oh. notice that Nuke Duck is now coming in on the flank. Nemesis, oh, the Petvine Gaze was dodged away, and that means the Equalizer can come down. Nemesis doesn't have Flash, but does have the Seraphs. Zersi on the chase here. If he lands that pre- Ooh, Oh, he missed it. Oh, that was close. If he land that, he was going to roar his way into the fight. Self-made. Um, excuse me? Uh... It may have been to just zone the bot lane of Origin away I mean, he, he to allow... He definitely zoned them for a second. Reckless. I mean, for sure. But I, I don't know if he was looking for a pick because his team definitely wasn't in a position to set up that play. Tom Kench ultimate now to help his AD carry get out of harm's way as Origin set their eyes on another outer tower. And Origin, they've had great control over this early game. A lot of it obviously comes off the back of winning the 2v2 bot lane and Xerse camping the top side of the map to mean that... Alfari is now just straight up winning that one versus one with the Trinity Force already completed. He's constantly forcing Whippo to play more defensively and Reckless and Hill are saying, well, they're actually doing pretty well in the straight up two versus twos. Unfortunately, if uh, the jungler or anyone from the side of Origin shows up, they can't commit to that fight just because of the big difference between some of the itemization. There's the GP ultimate, there's the Rumble ultimate that could come down and the fact that Xerxes is level 11 as well. So 
Fnatic don't really want to fight right now. They're going to rely on the scaling aspect of their comp. I do still think they have a very solid late game, and I think that as the game goes longer, it's going to be harder for Origin to play, but right now, with the goalie that they have, with the itemization that they're working towards, uh, they should be feeling very comfortable. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you look back at the first dragon that Zersley was almost able to get in and steal and wonder if Origin being on a quicker clock towards Soul Point, especially with it being a Cloud Drake, would, could be the difference in this game. Because if Fnatic do scale up, if they're able to be the pests that they were in the last game and delay and delay and delay, that scaling does look very strong. And we are on a much longer clock for that, clo uh, that Cloud Soul. Origin still needs to get three more dragons if they're going to hit it. Xerxes managed to catch out Nemesis here. No flash, remember. The Petrifying Gaze is going to land. The Void Rush will come out just in time, but Nemesis is able to get the kill. And now Whipper is fighting off towards the bottom side as Nuketuck forced away. The flash in. Upset. There's the hook, though. You can see the jump in from Selfmade. He goes Golden. Hillisang gobbles up Whipper to get him out. The Moonlight Vigil is going to connect as well. And Selfmade is down. One for one so far in this trade. Hillisang trying to get away, but he doesn't have the flash. All he's got is an exhaust. And at the moment, the stopwatch won't delay for long enough. Healed up with a piercing darkness, but in the end he will fall and Origin get two kills. So initially that play did not look promising for Origin. Xerxes dropping so quickly meant that Fnatic were in a position to turn it around, but the moment they chased onto the rest of Origin, that was when Destiny came up clutch, but now they have the right set on Alfari. Yeah, it feels like he's being a bit greedy staying around here. Got the movement speed to Cannon Rush, try and turn it back. Whoa, Reckless takes half his health. Senna is a squishy, squishy champion, and when you're playing into a Trinity Force with that Sheen proc, it can be uh, pretty surprising how much damage a Gangplank can put out. Yeah, he does use his ultimate there, so he's not going to have that available for a while, and with the Drake spawning in about 40 seconds, he may end up regretting that, but we'll see as we jump back into the replay. So let's see how all this action started off. Xerxes has information on where the Casio is. Great um, showcase from our observers utilizing the Rek'Sai passive to identify where Cassio has been locked down so the knockup comes through and again like you're looking at this he gets stunned up by a great Cassio ultimate from Nemesis to lock him down and then to disengage and this is where like okay we can chase on the upset the flash comes through but then the great hook with the box self-made actually flashes in and gets hit by the box himself he gets slowed down can't lock down upset and you actually create a four versus two situation because nemesis can't follow reckless doesn't have his ultimate available to offer the utility or rather the the healing and damage that it offers so then they can just chase down hillisang and uh, they end up finding two quick kills even though because whippo is able to escape so great stuff there from origin they're continuing to expand their gold advantage yeah, and they got the rift hold and put it down just in time in this middle lane However, Bwipo has a flank, Upset with the Lantern. We'll try and dodge away. Bwipo trying to land that Darkin Blade. They jump in, Upset's very low already, but Bwipo caught underneath the turret now as Upset can open up the big guns. Xerxes going in for the knockup, but Hillisang's going to take a lot of damage, and Bwipo's going to get spat out right into the jaws of Origin, who can't quite get him down. Moonlight Vigil connects, and Upset goes unstoppable. 5-0 and oh now on this Aphelios, and Origin can turn towards that Cloud Dragon. And Origin are just winning out on every single fight. When we came into this series, there was a lot of discussion around who is going to look stronger. And after the first two games, everyone said that it was game, set, a match. Easy 3-0 for Fnatic. And coming into game four, I looked at this draft and I thought... I don't know about this. Origin having to have a good early game against Fnatic, I think is a challenge. Like, yes, they did it in game three, but I don't know if they can do it again. And they've done it. And now they've held on to this lead. And now they're in a position where they get to team fight when they have such a big gold advantage. And that's where they thrive. Team fighting is what Origin does so well. And they're executing perfectly. They're playing around Alfari. They're playing around Upset. And Destiny is landing some crucial hooks. His ultimates have been game changing. And now Origin are controlling this game. They have secured two Drakes. We finally get the Cloud Souls. No Zillion this time. There's no Zillion <laughs> medic. However, Cloud Soul with a GP ultimate, with the um, Rumble ultimate, with the Aphelios ultimate. These are all such crucial ultimates that when they're available more often, just gives Origin the opportunity to fight even more often. And right now here in game five, they are looking good. They're looking strong. They still have a lot to do to close this one out, but they're looking to take us to game five now. Oh, I, I would be so hyped if we have. Imagine that two playoff series, both of them going to game five. I'd be even more excited for Misfits Rogue tomorrow as well. Uh, we'll see if Origin are able to hold on to it because they were in a similar position in the last game and the Fnatic were able to keep that gold difference at about this mark, about 5,000 or so, and just stall and stall and stall. And if Fnatic gets to stall this game, where well, you've got the Cassia, you have a lot of power coming out from the center as well. 
The only problem is that Fnatic don't have a split push option like they did before because the Aatrox cannot destroy. I think you underestimate Hillisang. Do I? Nah, maybe you don't. Hillisang hit with the Moonlight Vigil. Inferno comes down, doesn't do as much damage as they like. Is able to walk out of that one. Ultimate's burnt with the Equalizer and the Moonlight Vigil. And actually, Fnatic burnt nothing to get Hillisang out. Yeah, I mean, he's a tanky boy. Good hook Another lands, hook but no follow up. Destiny yeah, Destiny's now. Destiny's now out of position because of that. Flashes away. The last and Grace coming out. He's healed up. Gripo's going to take a lot of damage and off towards the bottom side of this. You can see Xerxes trying to fight, but a great Dawning Shadow will do a lot of healing, and Xerxes is the first to fall. Gripo, though, getting chased down by Upset. Can't quite get the kill for Nanak. Blinking health bars, oh but managing words. to walk out alive. So that was a fight on two fronts there. It looked like Fnatic was trying to collapse on Destiny initially. He doesn't end up dropping, but then Zerse and Alfari were diving onto the backline of Fnatic, and they were not able to find any kills. So yes, this hook initially lands from Destiny, but it doesn't make any sense. The rest of his team are not in a position to follow up, so Fnatic's like, let's just punish him. He flashes out, he gets a good heal from Nuke Duck. Meanwhile, Zerse and Alfari are looking to dive onto the three of Fnatic. Knock up isn't enough, because look at the shielding that just comes through from Hillisang from the ultimate of Reckless oh. on top of the Grey Health, and then while the E does come out onto Nemesis, he then gets the Seraph shield, which helps keep him alive, so I think the target focus there from Xerxes was just a little bit off, he yep. shouldn't have been trying to kill Hillisang, his goal should have been killing Nemesis or Reckless, and it ends up costing him his life, so it ends up being a 1 for 0 in favour of Fnatic, but no real advantages gained either side. Yeah, it felt like he was split as well, because he tried to kill Hillisang and then altered Nemesis, and I wonder if, just with all of them being on top of each other, he altered the wrong one, because if he no, ults I think, Hillisang, I yeah, think I'm in sure the Hillisang last died. moment, he realized that his ult was not enough to kill Hillisang with all those shields, so he just changed targets. I think that, because he landed his ferocious bite onto Nemesis as well, so I think that if he just committed to Nemesis at the start of the fight, he probably would have been fine, um, but he just didn't factor in how much grey health Hillisang was going to get and how big the shield would be from Reckless's ultimate as well. So to be fair though, Nemesis could have just popped his Seraphs even earlier. So regardless of the target, I think it was going to be very difficult for Zerse to successfully find that kill because the shielding on the two was just going to be so extreme. All right, well, Fnatic able to win out that last fight. As you said, it was a battle on two fronts. Alfari wasn't really able to get onto Bwipo or onto that back line that they wanted. And now we are 25 minutes in. It's a 4,000 gold difference. Sorelia was the, was the first item from Destiny instead of the Redemption that I expected. He's constantly getting harassed by Hillisang and Reckless in this middle lane. Hillisang very willing just to tank up the turret. And you can see Destiny down to lower than half HP. Hillisang now has the Gargoyles and the Sunfire Cape complete. Let's look at where we are in terms of other items. Three items on upset. Morello Nomicon complete on Nuke Duck. He keeps going for that first against this Senna instead of grabbing himself the Leandries. Still holding on to that Null Magic Mantle as well. Yep. We're and the Doran Shield, that's the most important part. Of he it. does have a lot of components for the Banshee's yeah. Veil right now. So, but he could also pivot this itemization into uh, pretty much anything, because this builds into almost all AP items in our game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he could also be working towards the Andries, he could be working towards Void Staff, he has quite a few options. Uh, the Tom Kench ult is going to be used bot to see if they can lock down our forest. This does expose yeah, the Baron, Baron. Baron, but Nemesis is shoving top and Whippo has TP, so I think it's super dangerous Pull to just the trigger, rush this one down. Just actually do it. You've got Crescendum, you've got Kalibum, you've got the best guns from Upset to do this. Selfman's going to try and get into it, and you can see actually Nemesis is teleporting down towards the bottom side. Oh no, it's Whippo teleporting, and it's Nemesis teleporting down towards the bottom side of this fight. They've looked for Selfman. Zersi down to low, below half HP. Wait, upset, 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 upset. Oh, a great hook from Destiny stops Upset from getting caught out. Now he's able to flash, but Whippo able to land the final Darking Blade, and he takes him out. And now this is an awful fight for Origin. And another good hook comes out from Destiny. The Void rush in. Whippo healing all the way through it. And now Fnatic can find their fight. They can find the people that they want to catch out. Nuketuck trying to do what he can, but Whippo low. Reckless and self-made here in time. Destiny with a good play. The Lance been coming out, but Nuketuck would take it to his certain death. But he might be dead anyway. Last embrace is used. The Dark Blade connects. And Fnatic find a perfect fight in the river. Absolute disaster for Origin. Upset the key carry of the team. Ends up falling. His positioning was poor. Origin, they thought that they caught out self-made, but it seemed like the execution was just not there. They should have made a decision to either commit to the Baron and then turn and then disengage after not finding self-made, or they should have just stuck on the Baron and looked to kill it. But now the game has flipped completely on its head, and let's have a look back at exactly how this one played out. So TP comes through. Destiny does land a hook onto self-made. And let's look at the follow-up CC. So the Flay comes through, 
A great ultimate from Selfmade stops the rest of Origin following through. And then look at the positioning from Selfmade here. He recognizes that he's overset. The lantern isn't available because I think the gangplank just took it. And then when he flashes out, he just flashes into the warm embrace of Whippo, who just shuts him down. And with him gone, there's just not enough damage on the side of Origin. There's nothing left. So Fnatic can just run Origin down. And now Fnatic sit with the Baron, and we talked about the scaling avenue. That one crucial mistake could mean that Fnatic is now so much stronger in the team fights. Look, Nemesis level 16. This dude is at three items now. Like, Nuduk's not going to be able to match him. When it comes to these fights, I think that Nemesis is just going to be able to dominate. Well, we'll have to wait and see, because that Baron is going to allow Fnatic to push in this middle lane. And now Origin, equal on gold. They do have the Cloud Soul as an avenue to get out of the game, but we will see if they can manage to get it because Fnatic, as you say, have a lot of control in this game and are only going to get more gold as these turrets start to fall. Origin were looking so good for the vast majority of this game, but that one mistake could end up costing them this whole series. Like, the amount of swing that that has given over to Fnatic is absolutely huge. And yes, while Reckless is very poor, he's still completed two of his Lethali items. He's working on his third. Hellasang is so tanky, which means there's such a strong front line for Fnatic to play behind. And the gap between Whippo and Alfari is now starting to close. Here we go, Fnatic looking to dive. Nuke Duck already almost down. He gets caught out and now upsets the next target. They're just dead. Origin can't do anything about this. They just get swept off the map. Summoner's Rift is a graveyard for Origin players, and you can see Fnatic able to take three, only lose one, and now can push in for an inhibitor. Wow, and they just they just tower dived Origin. There was like nothing that stood in their way. They didn't even need Nemesis. I was just talking about how Whippo had closed the gap against Alfari. He like he transcended the gap. He flew through the gap. This man was just so strong. And then just when it looked like he was about to die, he also had Hillasang's peel, but it wasn't enough. And now that's gonna be two inhibitors down. Fnatic have instantly flipped this game around. And Origin, it looks like they're not gonna be able to hold on for much longer. It's not over yet, Vedius, but it is dire straits here for Origin. Fnatic, after one fight, have just totally turned this game on its head. The Baron is about to fall off, but they have got everything they wanted out of it. Double in hips down. You've got a Cassio who's building up towards a death cap. You have a huge Bripper as well with that Death Dance and Black Cleaver. He is doing absolute work on this Aatrox. We know now, well, we knew before why it's been banned against him in basically every game Fnatic have played. It's uh, it's a situation though where Zerse had a two level advantage on Selfmade for pretty much the entire game and now Selfmade has a level advantage on Zerse. Yes, Zerse did just turn 14, but the fact that Nemesis is three levels over Nuke Duck, Upset is strong, but he's not as strong as Nemesis. And now they're looking for the collapse. Nemesis, no flash. Upset caught out again. He tries to blast Cone out, but he is just locked down. And Whipper will take him. The flash over the wall from Hillisang. He wants more. He wants a piece of this action. Zerse is going to try and run away. Whipper with the world and a healed up, shielded up by the Dawning Shadow. And you can see, like, Upset can't go anywhere. Upset can't walk anywhere on this map. Yeah, that was a great collapse from Fnatic. Good utilization of the Tom Kench ultimate to catch. Just catch Upset completely off guard, and now with so much of the damage just disappearing. Origin, they're on their last legs. They have to hold this inhibitor tower for as long as they can, but Whippo is pushing in the bot lane as well. Super minions are coming in from everywhere. This is the last hold for Origin. But how do you hold without your AD carry? He's most of your gold right now. If Fabi can try and do something, he doesn't have the cannon barrage. He's used it. That turret is going low as Whippo pushes in the Nexus Towers down towards the bottom side. Origin, your last legs is your last stand. You've got to do something. You've got to make a fight happen. Reckless down below half HP, but the Nexus Towers are being focused down by the Super Minions, and that's all three inhibitors down. And now the push comes on. Fnatic, five members strong, upset, back alive, and we'll see. Can they hold on? Origin, knocked back. They've caught Xerxes. He goes golden. Destiny locked up in the last embrace as well. Nemesis steps forward, but he's actually getting chunked out. Down towards the bottom side of the fight. Nemesis is holding up two when Whippo's taken one. Upset, you've got to do something miraculous here. He gets the shutdown of Whippo. Nuntuck flashes back onto his fountain, but that's the second Nexus Tower down. You can see Upset trying to get the damage on Reckless. He gets him. Nuke Dark, Nuke Dark, and the Origin have somehow held on to this game. Just barely were Origin able to hold the line. Nuke Duck is looking to find that final chase onto Hillisang. They want to get that ace, and they might be able to secure the Cloud Soul, but their base is in tatters. There are no structures left. All three inhibitors are down. And yes, Fnatic. They were able. They they couldn't quite close out the game here. But look at how 
they, uh, they're able to play this one out. So Destiny drops a lot, but Upset is left untouched on the back line, while Fari is just 1v1ing against Nemesis. Selfmade quickly runs out of mana, and the moment Upset takes down Whippo and Nemesis and Selfmade overstep, that's when Origin realize that they can commit to the rest of this fight. They're able to take down Reckless, they take down Selfmade, and Hillisang has to run with his tail between his legs. But still, three inhibitors down for Fnatic. No real, uh, sorry, for Origin. There's a Cloud Drake on the map. It would be the sole Drake for Origin, but how do you even get out of your base? You can't step anywhere, you can't do anything. Bam enough in 20 seconds time as well. Fnatic are in total control of this game. Origin, it, like, it would be a miracle. It would take something miraculous for them to fight back. We've seen that they can do it. But the question is now with Fnatic continuing to scale up with the death cap almost complete on Nemesis with three lethality items on Reckless. You cannot discount the amount of damage Fnatic can put out in a heartbeat. So the thing is, the gold is even, but it's not really even. Because you kind of have to look at relative damage, and Nemesis is just going to output so much more than so many of what Origin can actually offer. Alfari does have his TP up, but Origin can't really leave their base to check and contest the Baron. Their best bet is to hold the line once again and try and force a fight against Fnatic, but... The problem is, with three waves of super minions walking into the base, there's just going to be so much that Origin has to deal with. I don't know how they can find a successful fight. Look at all these super minions in the top lane. Well, we'll see if they can. Abyssal Voyage is used down towards that bottom lane. I think that's Hellasang just by himself using the Bam buff to push in the wave. And this is like four super minions. Upset's going to try and clear it out. World Ender used by Whippo. It's last chance saloon for Origin, a good hook, comes out onto self-medic, he uses the stopwatch and now Hillisang's in range for the Devourer, Xerxes already almost dead and he's gone. And now it's a 4v5, Moonlight Vigil coming out, doesn't connect onto Reckless, doesn't connect onto self-made, the hook's still missing, the hook's going wide, Hillisang puts it down the exhaust and he's just trying to focus down the Nexus. Whippo fighting off towards the top side, op upset opening up, but that is the Nexus and that is the series for Fnatic. They will meet Mad Lions in our winner's bracket next week. Wow. What a final game to round out the series. I thought we were going to game five. Medic, I thought that we were going to go all the way. It looked like this was Origin's game, but that crucial Baron throw gave Fnatic everything that they needed to close out this series. What a fantastic turnaround. What great control after finding that tiny advantage. And while Origin definitely made Fnatic work for it, I think Fnatic still showcased what they were capable of, and yes, there were a couple of individual mistakes this game, like losing the 2v2 bot, the fact the top lane got shut down so heavily, definitely some things to evaluate for Fnatic. This was not the clean 3-0 that we expected it to be after the first two games, but Fnatic still ultimately getting the 3-1 and looking very convincing moving into the next round. Yeah, they really did. I think... Um... There's a few things that they'll want to work on. Game three, game four, there were mistakes made, especially around the bottom lane. You know, uh, losing out the 2v2 is something that Fnatic will have to look at and have to understand uh, how they change things. But out of the four teams we've seen over the last two days, I think Fnatic stand, you know, head and shoulders above everyone else right now. Yeah, at least that's what we've seen. And yeah. of course, we still have Misfits versus Rogue tomorrow. Uh, we may see something impressive from them. But as a result of this, Origin will now move down into the lower bracket. And as we've already said, Fnatic will stay in the upper bracket. They will get to go up against Mad Lions in a best of five next week. That's definitely not <laughs> what everyone was expecting. No. Um, but now Origin will be the... The next challenge for the winner of Misfits versus Rogue. And then the winner of that series will go up against G2. So we have a really exciting week next week. But as you rightly said, Fnatic is looking good. And I cannot wait to see what they can do up against MAD. Because MAD just seem to be the, the young rookie upstarts that keep defying expectations. Maybe they can do it against Fnatic. I'm sure they've learned a lot in this series against, with the, but watching Fnatic and Origin play. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with next week. Yeah, it definitely is. It also means that either G2 or Origin will not be in our final week of playoffs, which is uh, a little yeah. bit of a surprise for me, I'll be honest. Uh, you guys, you can get involved at home and vote for your Kia player of the series at LEC on Twitter. Uh, Bwipo, Nemesis, and Selfmade are your options. Some very good options there. I think looking at the first two games, uh, Nemesis and Selfmade are definitely up there, but Bwipo had a barnstorm of a game in that last one. 
Yeah, I think uh, Wob Whippo definitely did play well in the final game. For me, the ultimate player of the series has been Nemesis. He's been incredibly consistent, I think, throughout the entire series. I think he showcased a reliability in what he's capable of and how you can fall back on him when things do get very difficult. And while I don't think he always has those performances that, you know, when you think of a Perks where he's, like, making all these crazy plays that, like... Uh, dominate games I think what he does showcase is that when the chips are down when you need someone to fall back on he's someone that you can always rely on and I think his Azir performance was very solid his Yasuo was incredibly good and like he's played four different champions across this series showed a wide array of options that he can bring to the table uh, and I think that overall he's had a great series so props to Nemesis I think he looked very good yeah, I think we can all agree, though, Hillisang was robbed uh, that Trundle performance. <laughs> he lost. He lost that I'm game, MVP Medic. And a large part of why he lost is because he kept dying and yeah, Upset he, got super fed. <laughs> he was really distracting a lot of the time. Think, <laughs> like, he, you, when you when you role play as a champion, you know, being a troll, playing a troll, yeah, that's, like, yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. the next level, in my opinion. Right, that is true. Like he did really embody what, uh, what that champion is. But he had a solid Tom Kench performance as well, like... In any yeah, case, really I did. think like I think a lot of question marks are now going to be asked around uh, Fnatic because if they had just three zeroes, then you'd be like, okay, cool, Fnatic looked like the best team in Europe. But then, like they lost two early games yeah. against Origin, so maybe there's not a clear cut gap between them and everyone else. Maybe they are exploitable, and you have to be scared when you're going up against Mad Lions because they will exploit those mistakes. But I think what Fnatic showed is the moment they have a grip on the game, they do not let go. And they have a very firm grip. And I think that of the teams that we've seen so far, when it comes to the mid to late game, they're definitely one of the cleanest that we currently have in playoffs. So while there are definitely things to poke holes at, definitely looking incredibly stable and consistent and uh, definitely a force to be reckoned with right now in the LEC. I definitely agree with you. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how Fnatic and Mad Lions face up against each other next week because... Like, my expectation...